Hi, this is Yosef Bhartia and we are here at Open Source Summit in Vancouver. Today we have with us once again, and once again we have with us Fatih Dikarvansi. You are Executive Director of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Fatih, it's great to have you back on the show in person, right? Yes. Uh, we saw each other, like, as you're reminding me, very, very early days yeah. of Spinnaker yeah. uh, after that COVID happened. And we have been talking remotely, yeah. but it's uh, great to see you again in person. Which brings me to the point of last time we talked about when the Syrian Foundation was like announced. But now I want to talk a bit about, uh, you know, the state of the foundation today, what you folks have achieved, some milestones, where we are. Thanks for having me, Swap. And as you mentioned, it's great to see you again after six, seven years in person. As you noted, uh, the last time when we met over uh, Zoom and discussed what is CD Foundation and what are our goals and what is our vision. It was early days for me as well within the foundation. I joined June 2020 to CD Foundation as the executive director. And since then, uh, we have been working on identifying key use cases of our end users, the challenges they are facing, and how we can help address those challenges to help our end users and make them part of our community. And just to recap, Continuous Delivery Foundation is an open source community to provide neutral forum for anyone who wants to contribute in Continuous Delivery uh, domain. And we provide home to Continuous Delivery projects and we have nine projects, CD events, uh, Jenkins, Jenkins X, Ortelius, Tecton, Persia, Shipwright, Spinnaker. I think that's all. And the great thing about Continuous Delivery Foundation, which is related to what we have been working on achieving is our community has lots of practitioners from end user organizations, from big cloud providers, and we are all working together to find out how we can make our lives easier when it comes to establishing and running continuous delivery pipelines and running with the transformation efforts within our organizations, as well as we are looking to different technologies to see how they can help organizations to, you know, bring new features, bug fixes, security fixes to their products in a much faster manner. So that is uh, literally the vision of Continuous Data Foundation. And personally, I think the Continuous Data Foundation is the place where anyone wants to take part in evolving the Continuous Data ecosystem, because we are working with very cool stuff that will transform the ecosystem and will have greater impacts on broader industry. Can you talk about uh, the role and importance of continuous delivery in today's modern, you know, cloud-centric, you know, world where, you know, things are moving very fast? Yeah, if we go back maybe 10 years ago, when this whole virtualization effort started, everyone was like, okay, this will make our, you know, life's much better when it comes to bringing new products to market faster and so on. And then cloud native transformation style and the virtualization cloud native microservices, the cloud itself made a lot of things possible. Like you can simply use a cloud provider, you get you know your development environment set up in minutes, you develop your microservice, you get that microservice you know, built into a container image, you get that container image test and deploy it to your production environment. And that is a great thing for organizations to, again, go to market faster, bring cool features, new products to their users faster, and gain competitive advantage when it comes to you know, being first with certain things. But that also brings additional challenges because, again, if we think about the you know, traditional way of doing stuff with you know, very tightly integrated you know, software and hardware, when open source wasn't this big, Things were slow, but kind of manageable. But now cloud is bringing additional complexities as well, because developers need to learn a lot of new technologies. They need to you know, spend time on different activities that weren't traditionally part of their job description. So that increases you know, cognitive load on our developers, and then we need to make sure that our developers could focus on value-adding activities. And continuous delivery is one of the key pieces in this you know, picture. Like all this platform engineering, SRE and SRE and all those things, they are actually there to address these complexities and difficulties our developers may be facing day in, day out. And again, continuous delivery is an enabler for organizations to actually remove that complexity so their developers, again, could continue what they are doing 
creating new products, developing new features. And complexity is not just, you know, consumes more time for developers, it's also cost. Yeah, exactly. And uh, last week when AWS, you know, Prime, they talked about, you know, microservices and uh, cost. So it, it, had, it had nothing to do with microservices. No. It's, it's more about using the right tools, right yeah, technologies, exactly. and also to simplify the complexity because sometimes I think we had this discussion uh, with you earlier also, uh, new companies, they get overwhelmed with new technologies. Instead of uh, looking at what we need, they're like, hey, this is what we should use. So talk once again a bit about uh, uh, where you see the right approach, right tools. It's not just because something is shiny and new, you should embrace it. Exactly. Like I, I'm a software engineer. And I will continue to take a technical engineering look at these things. And when we meet with other you know, fellow friends from community, we start talking about high level topics. And all, after a while, we find ourselves talking about certain tools. And everyone has their own you know, favorite tool and so on when it comes to continuous integration, delivery, observability, testing, and so on. And the thing I try to you know, share with my fellow friends is like, instead of us you know, looking at what is the coolest and let's bring it to our organization, we should look at what can help us to you know, move us forward faster, better. Tools shouldn't dictate what we can achieve. We should find the right tools and use them. If a tool doesn't help us, it could become an issue. You know, you, you have one more thing to look after. And that is pretty key uh, thing. And that is actually related to our state of the report we published this week on Monday. And one of the interesting findings there is the organizations who are using modern tools and technologies for their DevOps activities show greater improvement when it comes to performance. But the key thing there is not just any tool. The tool that actually helps you removing manual work you might be doing in the past and automating that using that modern technology so you can spend that time you were spending in the past for manually handling tasks for some other creative work, for example. So yes, tools, technologies are important, but we need to be careful when it comes to making those selections and bringing them to our organizations. And then we look at, you know, the trends in the market, of course, you know, vendors, you know, when they come, and also actually this is the beauty of open source actually, that as folks create new tools, you know, hey, there's there's a neutral platform that you can bring, but at the same time, it should also be, the focus is also that, hey, this is what the tools do and bring all the people together. So can you also talk about the role of these kind of e events where the, you know, when you also bring the whole community together so they can see, hey, I am solving this problem like this versus they're working and interacting within their own company. Yeah, I think like again, I can give the continuous data foundation as an example. As I mentioned, we have nine projects and they're all great projects. And events like Open Source Summit or our event we had Monday and Tuesday this week, CDCon and GitOpsCon, these are great opportunities for our community members because I might be doing something at home and I identify a problem. I'm writing something which may become a cool thing, but at the same time, someone might have already done something about it. Instead of me going with my own thing, I could find about that work as part of such open source events and say, oh, this looks really cool, and that actually solves my problem. Instead of me creating my own thing, I should contribute to the existing efforts. So like the collective efforts of open source community is greater than you know individual efforts. So that is pretty key, you know, think about these events and broader open source movement, like if we come together and when we come together, we really become powerful you know, force transforming people's lives and impacting their lives in a positive manner because all these technologies in the end, we use them uh, during our lives on a daily basis. Uh, I would like to get some update on the foundation. Uh, any announcement that you folks made, which also shows, you know, where the foundation is heading? Yes, this is actually building on top of our conversation we had last year in August, like when we talked that time, we touched different topics on a high level. For example, software supply chain security, you know, over a year or two executive orders, European Union, you know, uh, issuing, you know, regulations, rules around these things. So software supply chain is one of the hot topics within Contus Zero Foundation as well. So when you think about software supply chain, it's like, okay, it's this huge thing. You take open source technologies, you bring them to your organization, you use them as dependencies, and then you build your products and then you ship it to your customer. But something that 
is the backbone of that software supply chain, and that is the continuous delivery pipelines. And that is why the continuous delivery foundation and our projects and our special interest groups are putting a lot of effort to improving the state of software supply chain and contributing to overall, overall efforts to improve the state of software supply chain. And one of the announcements we made this week is about one of our projects, Tecton, which actually brought in four new features for use for their users, for example, Salsa. Like if you use Tecton, you will get Salsa level two support out of the box or trusted resources and artifact hub and so on. So these things all help organizations to secure their supply chain using such technologies and it brings multiple open source projects together, which is related to the question you asked earlier. All these communities projects coming together without thinking like which project, which foundation, we are here to solve this problem. So that is a key effort our project and community put into, and that is one of the things we announced. The second, and perhaps pretty critical topic, which is related to security as well, is interoperability. Well, this is one of the key things we hear a lot from our end users. Again, if we think about typical continuous delivery pipeline, when a developer commits the code to main branch, it goes through this long pipeline until it hits, it hits the production as an artifact, as a product. And that code interacts with many systems, such as code repositories, build tools, artifact repositories, test frameworks, and all these things are orchestrated by continuous delivery frameworks. And currently, there is no common vocabulary within the ecosystem, which means that whoever is using these, all these different tools, which could be an open source or commercial tool, then they need to put a lot of effort and time to integrate these tools with each other which is time consuming, costly, and most of times easy to break because open source communities move fast. And that is the other announcements we've made. One of our projects, for example, CD events has been working with multiple open source projects such as Jenkins, Spinnaker, Tecton, and TestCube to get those technologies talk using the same language. So those projects could speak the same language out of the box, which further enables securing the software supply chain because then you can create this stack graph to find out which commit caused that security issue and go back and fix that problem thanks to this common vocabulary. So that is the second announcement we made. Announcement we made. And the last annou announcement was about a new project. So we have an Ortelius project within CD Foundation, which is a microservices uh, framework with supply chain uh, capabilities built in. Red Hat contributed project Emporos to Ortelius as a sub-project, so they will join force, which is again related to the question you asked. Like, instead of having two separate projects working on relevant areas, they instead come together and give the best possible experience to their users. So these are three project-specific announcements we made on Monday during the first day of our Silicon and GitOpsCon event. And again, the question you asked, where do we see the CD foundation? I think we are currently on really upward trajectory and our community is showing a lot of, you know, passion, putting a lot of effort into solving these very difficult problems. Because these are really hard questions and we are trying to find answers to those questions. And thanks to you know, our members, our end user contributors, we are actually moving forward together. So that is project like seeing this type of efforts come to fruition and get interest of other organizations, other contributors, other projects, make us really happy. Because then we think, oh, what I am doing today here will be used by someone in different part of the world, making their lives easier. So I am really proud of our community's achievements. Thanks for talking about the project. I also want to uh, talk a bit about the you know, State of CD uh, report that came out uh, during this event. Talk about some of the key findings or highlight that where you saw, hey, this is, you know, which is either exciting or this is that I was not expecting. Yeah. So in addition to project updates, we also announced the fourth uh, release of State of CD report. State of CD report is a tradition of Contest Foundation. We release the new 
uh, iteration of state of city report during CDCon, our flagship event. And the fourth one was released on Monday. And it is uh, similar to previous reports, but there are differences compared to last year. One of the key findings within the report is it shows that the DevOps adoption is increasing, which is good. But at the same time, the adoption might be slowed down. Because in previous years, the increase was larger than this year's increase. I think this year it was 2% more than last year. And that brings up questions like why? Why the speed slowed down? And some of the reasons could be, again, DevOps is not just about using the technologies or you know creating pipelines or making sure the dev and ops teams comes together. It's, it actually impacts many parts of the organization. The organizational structure needs to be adjusted. The cultural aspects should be explained to organizations so they can embrace this change. In addition, the product structure may need to be adjusted to support the speed and you know sustainability that comes with DevOps. So that may be these three, four things may be reasons why the DevOps adoption is not that fast compared to how it was previous years. And the other interesting finding is that, again, this goes back to technologies. If the organizations employ right tool or technology for their DevOps activities, which could be test frameworks, build automation tools, observability, application performance management, that helps organizations to become better performers. So that is, again, it was same last year, and it is still great to see people are actually automating things rather than doing things in a manual manner, which is, again, very difficult to maintain and, you know, transform. A new finding in this year's report, which wasn't there last year, is application security testing is actually second most popular activity by the organizations. And that also highlights that if organizations automate application security testing and make those things part of their pipelines, that actually improves their performance as well. So that is a key finding of this year's report. And obviously, there are things we need to improve, otherwise we just you know, quit our jobs. So one of the things we find, found while we looked at the response, responses we got from ten, thousands of people, increasing number of DevOps te technologies help organizations to become better. But increase in number of hosted CI CD tools doesn't show that greater you know, performance improvement. Like when an organization uses like four or five CI CD tools, that actually has a weird curve. Sometimes it impacts the performance a bit negatively. And the way we look at that data is maybe lack of this interoperability across these different technologies is a contributing factor why the performance is not showing improvement. So that is kind of confirms like why we have been putting a lot of effort into this. And hopefully, since CD events adoption started right now with Jenkins, Spinnaker, Tecton, and TestScript leading the way, next year or the year after next, we should see some improvements there as well, because then organizations will not need to deal with increased complexity of the pipeline stem cells as well, because products are already causing difficulties maybe to some developers, and we need to remove this complexity from the supporting you know, infrastructure continuous pipelines, and so on. Perhaps with type of platform engineering kind of approaches. Fatih, thank you so much for taking time out today and give us an update on the foundation adoption and you know, the growth of the project and also the report. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.